I got into my perfect exchange university. I actually just got the email today. Uh, these are my top tips and tricks so that you can get into yours as well or as close to perfect as you can attempt or try. So you've decided you want to go on an exchange. Maybe, I don't know why you're doing it. Maybe it suits your course really well. Maybe you've got family back in, you know, a different country. Maybe you just want to go for the cultural experience or just a party, whatever. Whatever your perfect is, that's your perfect. Maybe you haven't been overseas before. Maybe, yeah, this is your first time traveling even out of state. These are some great tips that are going to help you consider maybe how much timing you're going to need and some realistic expectations to have. First tip right out the bat, start this process early. Start it way earlier than what you think you're going to need. For me, this process took a whole year. Now that was from my initial decision of that I wanted to go overseas to now. This week was when I received my confirmation of exchange with Kanzai Gadai. I don't know how to say that. I'm very sorry. I will learn. Um, I got that this week. It's been a year's process and it's still ongoing. I'm still waiting for scholarship things to get back. I'm still waiting for all sorts. It is a very stressful, very elongated process. There will be times where you feel like that nothing is happening and you'll get anxious about it. Maybe you're just like, oh shit, you know, have I failed? Have I missed something? No, you're probably fine. It is just a very, very, very stressful experience. Uh, give yourself all the time you need mentally as well. If you maybe have anxiety or anything, uh, it, it will be stressful. You can do it. I believe in you. It is absolutely worth it to do. Part of starting early isn't just the application process with meeting up with your university or whatnot. It is also things like getting your passport. I would actually recommend this as the first thing you should be considering doing in the gathering of details that you're going to need. So get that sorted. It can take a while depending on where you are. I come from an Australian perspective. When I got my passport, it was really quick. COVID's made things a lot more difficult and I hear that uh, traveling with COVID hit after COVID has been very different from what we might be used to. I have traveled overseas before. Um, I've traveled all around Australia and yeah, things have changed. So I don't have any, but you have no, no additional tips about that. I'm flying blind. Additional things you can start doing. So in this planning process, let's say that you, you've just come into university and you've already decided you want to do an exchange. Like you're going from high school to university and exchange in second or third year. That's a great way to like have that planned out. However, because you might be just starting this course, use that time in the domestic setting that you have as an available experience within the university system to see whether you are really liking that course, whether or not you want to change majors, whether or not you want to change subjects or what subjects might be better taken overseas. Do all that at home do it in your domestic university, it will save you a lot of time and heartache later. The other part of this larger planning process is figuring out where your stuff is going to go. In this year long process, you know, I've had to figure out who's going to take care of my birds. I have seven birds. Uh, I've got to make sure that they're, you know, I can't put them in long-term care. It's very expensive to do that because you have to test all of them and you have to test them for chlamydia. I did not know birds could get chlamydia. If you don't want to maybe expose your pets or anything to like having that situation, you know, maybe finding friends or family to put, um, to care for them for that period of time. Additionally, you gotta figure out where your stuff is going to go. If you are by yourself, you may have to consider getting a storage container because you probably don't want to be paying rent back in your home country and in the exchange one. 
if you are lucky enough to maybe have a dormitory or a share house situation um, they're pretty easy to move in and out of depending on where you are honestly just pay for a storage locker it's going to be way better and if you have any valuables like you know um, heirloom jewelry or old photographs or something there are services for safe and secure um, storage solutions for that they are pretty small um, and they do have like insurances and stuff however ugh, bleh, floods and fires happen you know I'm from Australia Th this is just what happens you know shit floods every fucking three months these days lastly in this planning stage in this starting early stage pump up your GPA a lot of universities do have limits about your academic credentials so yeah your universities may have restrictions on your grade point average uh, you have to figure out whether or not you can meet that standard um, just do your best to do so it is going to make the process easier even if it's not super high as long as it's just like at the limit that it needs to be it's better than nothing and just put that extra effort into it tip two become best friends with the staff members you're going to potentially need to access help from you know i would say that this is you know something that you should be doing for networking overall at university just being you know friendly and nice and personable with your professors and whatnot you don't have to be best friends but you know you should be able to communicate with them you're going to need references, whether they be academic or personal. They can be from cultural um, things. So maybe if you have a religious leader that you um, uh, respect or something, getting a reference from them, maybe your local MP, maybe like if you're part of any collectives or clubs, um, you know, if you make a positive impact that way, try your best to be a part of that so that you can get those good references. If you're maybe not able to make up the grade point average, having good references and having good help is the best way to kind of pad that out because when they're looking for exchange applicants if it is a competitive thing um, they're not just looking for people who excel academically they're looking for people who are culturally interesting who may be able to provide uh, interesting as, um, insights into things don't feel like that because you're not at a 6.5 GPA that you can't do it because you can. You can do this. You just have to leverage whatever you're good at. As part of um, being besties with all your faculty, uh, make friends and communicate really well with your exchange coordinators. Most universities have an exchange team or an international team. They help a lot out with, you know, foreign research, having people coming into uh, the university environment, international students and helping them out. They will be able to help you going overseas as well. They have all the updated information. They have everything related to the new COVID, you know, restrictions or lack thereof. Um, mine recently gave me about 20 free, like high grade rat tests for COVID. And I thought that was, uh, just, it was just a nice little thing that they did. Um, I go to QUT up here in Queensland, um, Australia. Uh, we're in Mianjin, Brisbane now. And my team, with QUT is one of the best. Well, I don't know whether it's the best or not because I don't go to any other university, but they have helped me immensely. They've helped me apply for scholarships. They've helped direct my, um, uh, how I do interviews. They've done a lot of like um, feedback on applications and they've been very open and very realistic about what you can kind of get out of the exchange process and that leads me to my third tip being realistic you got to be realistic in this situation because yeah i totally just baited everyone by saying yeah you can get your perfect university this is the part where i tell you that your perfect experience and perfect university is going to have to kind of differ or you know it's going to be something that has to be flexible because 
let's say you're like me. I got my perfect university and I got all my subjects approved for it so that all the subjects I do over there will transfer to my degree over here. That can change. Like everything might be perfect for me right now, but if I get there and some of those subjects I want to do aren't offered or maybe, you know, COVID happens again or I'm going to Japan, they have earthquakes and, you know, volcanoes and all other stuff. Things can happen that will stop it. And having a realistic idea of how these things are going to go and understanding that contingencies won't hold you back that is going to be the way that you get your perfect experience. So make the perfect experience three times over, have three different plans. Within that, you should also be considering the realistic nature of the fact that exchange rates suck. Um, you know, the economy is going to shit. You might not be able to save enough money to go over there, or maybe scholarships won't cover the whole thing. Maybe you won't be able to go to certain countries that would aid your um, career and degree because you'll probably get discriminated against or killed because you're a racial or gender or sexual minority. Maybe you'll be religiously persecuted. Maybe you'll have hate crimes, you know, legalized against you. There are so many different small things that can change that will be out of your control. So. In order to have your perfect experience, have your realistic expectations, set them out in multiple ways, have multiple different outcomes that you would be looking forward to, and try and figure out the best ways for you to handle how a bad situation might arise. So a great example is, uh, let's say we have another pandemic because Fuck it, let's have Super Ebola. Imagine a brand new imaginary Super Ebola comes along and we all have to get evacuated out of each country. Have you thought about how that will affect the credits that you might need to replace back when you get home to university? What are you going to do if you arrive back after the census date and you lose the ability to both receive credits from overseas and do them domestically as well. Are you okay with that extra six month wait and being tacked onto your study plan? You know, is it, are these things going to negatively affect you? Because if it is severely going to negatively affect you, if you're not able to be flexible, if you've got like a hardcore plan, I know some medical students have this, like if they've got like a way to be doing things exactly, maybe rethink doing an exchange that's long or in a country that might not have the best reputation of being safe. I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to Ukraine these days to study engineering. The other thing to be realistic in the situation, uh, some universities do not offer uh, dormitories or living arrangements like that. You're gonna have to figure it out yourself. I chose Japan because they do offer dormitories. I don't want to worry about renting. Renting's a nightmare domestically. Why would I want to do it in a foreign country? I also just really didn't want to go to Europe. I mean, Europe's nice, but nah. Same shit, colder. So yes, top tips. I hope this helped. Um, I will be making videos about more specific types of aspects of this, like choosing units that will transfer over a lot easier, how I got mine approved so quickly, um, the process of going through certain scholarships. I'd love to share that thing, that experience, so as many people can hear about it and know the best steps to get that. Um, I'm going to be doing these as a form of both reflection and knowledge spreading because why not? I want everyone to be able to experience these things. I hate this gatekeeping idea of like, oh, you've, oh, you've got to be understanding of how to travel overseas already or you have to have a massive academic thing. I'm like, you don't. 
you you can fail a subject or two and still do an exchange you can manage it you just have to plan ahead but yeah how do i end videos